Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Curiosity by Paul Jenkins. So this was sent to me by Time for Book, so check out her channel, I will link to it below. And uh, this was she sent to me as like a belated birthday present, and also because I've like never been to a thrift shop. So this is a thrift shop book for me as well. I got excited straight away by it because it's got a, a testimonial on the back by Mike Carey, who's also Mr. Carey, who wrote The Girl with All the Gifts. Who uh, I actually interviewed back in the day as well, and he described it as a redemptive myth for a mythless age. Clearly, Paul Jenkins is a pseudonym for Lewis Carroll collaborating with Douglas Adams. I'm going to read you the blurb as well because it does get a little bit complicated. In fact, let's do the author bio because he's quite an interesting uh, chap. So. Paul Jenkins is a British-born comic writer who lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He began his career at Mirage Studios, working on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Jenkins has written some of the biggest characters for Marvel and DC Comics, including Spider-Man, Batman, The Incredible Hulk, and Hellblazer. He is best known for reviving Inhumans as part of Marvel Knights and creating the century for Marvel Comics. Jenkins also writes for video games on hits like The Darkness, Incredible Hulk, and God of War. So yeah, pretty cool dude. And the blurb here? Will Morgan is a creature of habit, a low-budget insurance detective who walks to and from work with a flow of one-way traffic. For Will, imagination is a thing of the distant past. When a job opportunity enters the picture in the form of the mysterious Mr. Dinsdale, curator of the slightly less than impressive Curiosity Museum, Will reluctantly accepts the task of finding a missing box of levity, the opposite of gravity. What he soon learns, however, is that there is another world out there, a world of magic we can see only by learning to unlook at things, and in this world, there are people who want to close the Curiosity Museum down. With the help of his eccentric new girlfriend Lucy, Will will do everything he can to deliver on his promise to help Mr. Dinsdale keep the Curiosity Museum in business. Now that his eyes have been opened, he'll stop at nothing to keep the magic alive. A cross between Neil Gaiman's fantasy and Isabel Allende's magical realism, Curiosity is Paul Jenkins' impressive debut novel, exciting, fast-paced and uncanny, a must-read. So there we go. So on the blurb, uh, Mike Carey described it as Lewis Carroll mixed with Douglas Adams. I would disagree in that it feels more like Terry Pratchett mixed with Douglas Adams, but that's good because Pratchett is one of my favourite authors. It also reminded me of what The Shadow of the Wind could have been, but wasn't. <laughs> I'm going to go through and uh, take a look at some of the bits that I highlighted with my stickies. So um, I think this is, for a start, this is chapter one, and I think this is a great start to a novel. Will Morgan awoke from his regular anxiety dream, in which he had just finished second in a world's biggest failure competition. Outside the window of his one-bedroom apartment, another overcast morning grudgingly announced the start of yet another overcast week. Will closed his eyes and considered going back to sleep. He briefly flirted with the notion that he hadn't woken up at all, and that his lumpy old bed was just a part of his dream. But it was no use. He'd long since forgotten how to escape reality by use of his imagination. This was going to be much like any other miserable Monday in his life. It would lead to a tiresome Tuesday, a woeful Wednesday, a thankless Thursday, and a forgettable Friday. Will didn't even want to think about how dreadful the next weekend was already shaping up to be. We then have chapter two as well. The, he's he's very good at like ending and starting new chapters, I, I feel. So chapter two starts as follows. Magic arrived in the form of a knock on the door, which surprised Will to no end. He had only ever used the thing for opening and closing, and hadn't considered what it might sound like if someone actually knocked on it. It sounded hollow and rattly, very much in keeping with the way it looked. And that does a great job as well of establishing basically... He doesn't have many clients, you know? And it's cool how it is. It's like a magical realism private detective story slash adventure, you know? This thing as well, he uh, they, they come across uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart in music form. And Will says, is this some kind of joke? And uh, Dinsdale says, no, it's a concerto. So there's a lot of like just quirky little lines of dialogue and quirky little magical items because it's the Museum of Curiosity, you know? Basically, the concept here is it's very similar to how in Harry Potter there's that whole magical world happening in our world and we, we're just unaware of it. And the same thing kind of happens here and here's Dinsdale explaining how to unlook at things. So he says, you need to learn how to unlook at things if you're going to take on this job of mine. Life is not about how you use your eyes. It's about having vision. It's all about how you unlook at the world. Will decided this had gone for quite far enough. This trek through ever-falling temperatures had now put him in a very grumpy mood, and this seemed like as good a time as any to voice his opinion. Life is an ugly lake of treacle, he said. You can try to wade through it, but eventually you're going to get stuck. If you try to enjoy it, you'll end up sick. 
And if you go about looking at things bent at the waist like you do, Mr. Dinsdale, you'll probably end up with treacle up your nose. I also like, there's a very clever thing done with, basically, it's hard to explain, but like the physical appearance of a word. So we have upside down street in the novel. And basically, if you turn a particular word upside down, it means something else. And it's very cleverly done in this, I thought. But I don't want to spoil it because then it, it won't be as joyous. <laughs> so what I was saying earlier about, about him knowing how to end a chapter as well. So here's the end of chapter five. As Will looked up, he was astonished to see an attractive young woman with brown curly hair moving rapidly toward him with her arms raised high above her shoulders. He was equally astonished when she smashed him over the head with an oversized copy of Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, though he was forced to concede as he fell to the ground, stunned, that this was a novel approach. The intro to chapter seven here. The next morning, Will Morgan awoke from a fitful night's sleep in a rather disturbing variation of his anxiety dream, in which he'd arrived too late to register for the world's biggest failure competition and had been disqualified. As he opened his eyes and tried to adjust to the first challenge of the day, namely not rolling over and going back to sleep, he speculated as to the significance of the dream. But his instincts were far too sleepy to tell him what the significance might be. And then we have to, like, try and save the museum, and this is the reason why, so, um... So this is Marcus James, a TV pitchman. He does like adverts and stuff. So uh, Marcus James says, That's well understood, Mr. Dinsdale. Unfortunately, the museum's first curator, a Mr. Herbert Horatio Dinsdale, found himself behind on payments for an installation that occurred just after this city's first electric lights were required by municipal code. He neglected to repay a compulsory surcharge on his late fee of, Marcus James consulted a clipboard held up for him by one of his goons, 13 cents. Our records indicate that while he did pay his 13 cent late fee, the surcharge was subsequently ignored. And so you are looking at nine generations worth of compound interest at roughly 33%. Carry the one and adding an additional surcharge for every subsequent late fee, which comes to... Marcus James consulted the clipboard again. $458,307,200.59, payment of which is due in full by Saturday evening. And so the sort of the second half of this, the first half of this is really about the hunt for the missing box of levity. And then we go on to trying to save the museum, you know? I think this is a great quote as well. And uh, they're talking about this guy, Marcus James. If you ask me, the man's a menace to society. The bigger and more corrupt he gets, the easier it is for his corporation to become bigger and more corrupt. I sometimes wonder if it all won't it just explode in a big bubble of corruption. I think we all know governments like that. We have here as well an example of some of the uh, the exhibits at the Museum of Curiosity. So uh, we have uh, a small innocuous looking toolbox contained a series of ratchets, wrenches and screwdrivers once belonging to world famous escapologist Harry Houdini. The tools entertain the remarkable property of being able to unscrew screws, loosen nuts and pop off various restraining bolts that Mr Houdini would have encountered during his various attempts to drown in public. We'll add neither the energy nor the heart to inform Mr. Dimsdale that the remarkable properties ascribed to the tools were the very things any ordinary set of tools was supposed to possess in the first place. I like this as well. They have this one moment where they accidentally end up on TV and one of the characters kind of thinking on her feet as to what she can say. She says, everyone out there in TV land, be nice to each other, be nice to animals, read books, stay in school. <laughs> So yeah, all in all, it was a laugh. It was a good, you know, it was a good light-hearted read. Quite a good adventure novel in its own right as well. I gave this a four out of five and did enjoy it and would recommend it if you've been listening along to this review and you thought it sounds like your kind of thing. Definitely, as I say, something for you if you're into like Terry Pratchett and uh, Douglas Adams and Neil Gaiman and that kind of thing. So yeah, Curiosity by Paul Jenkins. And thank you, Time for Books. Really appreciate it. It was good. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Curiosity. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought about it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.